Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name is Chris Coney, I am the host of the Cryptoverse and the founder of Cryptoversity.com, the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Find out more at Cryptoversity.com. If you'd like to support the Cryptoverse, please go to Cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or Steemit. You can also upvote this episode of the Cryptoverse on Steemit to financially support the Cryptoverse at no cost to you. If you'd like to donate some Bitcoin directly, you can do so at the bottom of that page. Let's take a look at the markets this morning. We have one major move in the top 10, and that would be Ethereum Classic. In the last 24 hours, it's shaved 30% off of its value putting the overall market cap at $123.7 million. million. It makes an Ethereum Classic token worth $1.50. The trading volumes between the two Ethereum chains is about the same. It's around $44 million, with the main Ethereum chain being slightly more trading. So this is still yet as unresolved, so we'll see how things pan out. Uh, Steam up 6% today on $300,000 worth of trading volume. Not that much, really, compared to the uh, big heavies. That puts Steam still in the third position in overall market cap. And this has been bothering me. You know one of my favorite numbers is the overall market cap of the entire cryptoverse. Well, it's been hovering between 12 and $13 billion for the last, I'd say, couple of weeks. And uh, that annoys me because I want to see a steady incline on that to show that the whole cryptoverse as a, as a whole is growing and more money is coming into it. But either way, it's never standing still, as you'll imagine. Um, even when the market cap is standing still, pretty much all of the crypto projects are continuing to develop uh, new features and so on. And you know the old Dark Horse Dash sat there in seventh position as the most capitalized coin. It's actually up three percent today, but there's um there's a, if you watch um, Amanda's show on Dash Detailed, she made a good point. I think it was last week in the episode about sl- um, slow and steady versus fast and hard or something. That was the episode's name, and she was talking about the sort of the tortoise and the hare type thing, and the Dash is sort of the hare. They are doing the long, hard development process of you know putting the big solid blocks in place for a really solid um, infrastructure for, for the long term, rather than just being a uh, something based on hype and then pushing the price up and all that lot. Dash will steadily increase in value over time based on fundamental, solid um, foundations. So here we go. Looking at the Bitcoin price chart, yeah, nothing to report there. It's still steady. Sticking around uh, six hundred and fifty-three dollars today, and uh, the bars seem to be getting smaller actually, as time goes on. Well, actually, that probably means I can draw. Uh, um, what do you call it? A uh, an ascending triangle. Some people call it a something else. A penta. Do they call it? Let's see. Let me just draw this on here. If you want to see this, you can have a look at the YouTube version of the Cryptoverse. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's a symmetrical triangle, which will, looking at this, because it came into the triangle in an upward direction, it's, it's more likely to explode out of the triangle in an upward direction. But I'll leave those lines there for tomorrow and a few days after that, so I can see if it obeys those lines. In terms of the news today, courtesy of Bitcoin.com and Jamie Redman, who has written this article, I've chosen to share this one with you. It's the, the article reads... Decentralized Uber app delivers 1,000 meals in Austin, Texas. Now, this is more of a uh, an article with substance. It's not as it's not filled with so much excitement as the the drama with Ethereum, for example. But this is somewhat more meaningful, so I thought I'd pick this one out today. So, Unsung.org, an Austin-based arcade city, which is the decentralized Uber app, right? So Unsung, Unsung.org and Austin-based Arcade City are making a difference feeding people in need within the Texas capital. 
So far, the two teams have delivered 1,000 meals throughout the city as the ambitious project continues hacking away at hunger. 1,000 meals delivered in Austin. Unsung.org is an application that feeds the hungry by delivering unwanted food from local caterers and restaurants. The application gamifies the solution by adding Bitcoin to the equation, as well as users can be rewarded by using, sorry, by the Unsung community for good deeds. Back in June, Bitcoin.com reported on the anti-hunger application Unsung.org, teaming up with Arcade City's platform in Austin to experiment with the Unsung app. Recently, Unsung.org, with the help from a local radio station, The Crypto Show, teamed up with the Arcade City community. The decentralized Uber platform is a ride-sharing service that partnered with Unsung.org's Jason King, and Arcade City's drivers are helping to deliver meals across the city of Austin. King's first project, Sean's Outpost, has fed over 167,000 meals, uh, has fed over 167,000 meals, shouldn't that be people, over the course of Satoshi Forest's existence. Huh? Okay, they've just made reference to Satoshi's Forest in this article for the first time without defining it, but that's by the way. Now the platform being used in Austin has proved 1,000 meals so far to the hungry. Hang on a minute, now I'm confused. So recently, Unsung.org, with the help of the radio broadcast The Crypto Show, teamed up with Arcade City, teamed up with the Arcade City community, right? The decentralized Uber platform, Arcade City, is a ride-sharing service that partner with, with Unsung.org's Jason King, and Arcade City drivers are helping deliver meals across the city of Austin. I get that. So there's now three of them involved. The Crypto Show, Arcade City, and unsung.org so king's first project okay so king is jason king the guy who uh, founded unsung.org i assume called sean's outpost has fed over 167,000 meals over the course of satoshi forest's existence well i don't know what satoshi forest is and it doesn't actually define that in the article i just read that again just in case i was going crazy so it says, now the platform being used in Austin has proved has provided 1,000 meals so far to the hungry. King explains via social media, quote, pay attention to this. This is the 1,000th meal fed to the homeless in Austin, Texas with unsung.org's, or with unsung.org, holy crap, hashtag hack hunger. A community effort. King adds that Austin has been on fire since they teamed up with the drivers from Arcade City. Yeah, I suppose they have. People can visibly see that see this via the Unsung Austin's Facebook page where all the action is happening. There are hundreds of people helping with helping with with the cause, helping the, with the cause. Hmm. Yeah. See, I'm now doing being editorial. There are hundreds of people helping with the cause and pictures are displayed of drivers helping out, food being prepared and unsung.org's food bags being delivered. One organizer on the Facebook page writes, quote, Many thanks to Sarah and Co. for your generosity. May all of you be blessed many times over. We look forward to dividing these dividing dividing these and serving our homeless community on your behalf. Oh, I suppose, I suppose they mean the meals. One thousand meals is quite a feat for an operation operation maintained on social media and just started less than a month ago. Jason King and Arcade City's Christopher David are pleased with what's uh, organically taking place within the Texas capital. The Crypto Show has been involved helping move the process along as they broadcast their show from the Brave New Books store located in Austin. The decentralized movement and ideas like Bitcoin are transforming society for the better. Unsung.org is no different as they utilize both the utilize both to feed those who are hungry and needed a helping hand. Bitcoin.com is pleased to see groups working together to hack hunger, and we look forward to reporting the story of when the Unsung team feeds a 100,000 people and more. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Unsung.org delivering 1,000 meals across Austin? Let us know in the comments below. Okay. Um, what do I think? We don't know exactly how... Bitcoin figures into it. 
It said earlier on in the article that somehow the app has been gamified. It says the application gamifies the solution by adding Bitcoin to the equation as well as you as well as users can be rewarded by the Unsung community for good deeds. But where does the Bitcoin come from? That's the question I still have unanswered. And who decides who gets the money? Who gets the Bitcoin? Um, the Unsung community can specify that someone's done a good deed and then that person gets rewarded in Bitcoin. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I guess, I guess you could donate to the Unsung project in Bitcoin to provide some of that prize money. I don't know. It just doesn't define that, does it? Um, any interesting comments? Someone's like, have you considered posting your work on Steemit? Yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? But you know, you know, Uber have that service, Uber Eats. If you, if you have Google, if you Google that, Uber Eats, they, um, they've just added this additional service where an Uber driver will go and get your takeout food and bring it to you. So instead of you transporting yourself somewhere else, you can use the Uber network to transport stuff to you. So that's, um, this is Arcade City, which is becoming a rival for um, Uber in, in a decentralized way. And then they're actually, rather than just using it to bring people takeout food, they're using it to collect what would have been waste food from these takeouts and these restaurants and then driving it to homeless people, which is cool, right? So let's see if we can uh, squeeze another article in <clears throat> today's episode. Let's see. Well, this is a new one. This is, I think this has literally just been published because I didn't see that before. Ethereum creator interest in ETC coming from the Bitcoin side. Really? We have uh, Loyal creates blockchain style internet of loyalty in Dubai. Hmm. A decentralized Uber app, we just did that one. Bitcoin whales vote in favor of larger transaction blocks. Oh, I'm sure that's going to be interesting. Let's do that one. The sort of a Moby Dick style uh, graphic that they've used to uh, <laughs> for the for the article. Yeah, this is this was published yesterday, the 27th of July, and uh, it's been read four and a half thousand times, which is quite high for Bitcoin.com's articles. And there's 14 comments, so that's a good sign. So it's Bitcoin whales vote in favor of larger transaction blocks. Let's see what the article says. There are signs a majority of the Bitcoin universe's opinion is shifting in favor of large transaction blocks after an overwhelming poll vote. The issues uh, so the, the issues and Bitcoin's reaction to them were recorded on blockchain opinion poll site Bitcoinocracy. Bitcoinocracy. Uh, Bitcoinocracy, I quite like that idea. The site allows Bitcoin holders to vote on any issue posted by users signing statements with their Bitcoin keys so that results are verifiable. Hmm. I like it. You can already see a um, blockchain-based political voting scenario on the go there. It says, Wales add weight to vote. Of particular interest were two addresses containing significant amounts of Bitcoin voting with the majority. On Bitcoinocracy, results are tallied according to the total amount of Bitcoin backing or opposing a statement. So larger holders matter a lot. Well, yes, it does, the article is about whales, but this is more of a proof of stake kind of voting system, isn't it? Rather than proof of work. It says the whale addresses where this one, and it has a link, containing over 41,748 Bitcoin, and this one, link, with 44,998 Bitcoin. The questions addressed many key concerns regarding what might happen in the event of a Bitcoin fork, with some politically charged wordings. Questions voted on by the large holding addresses were, I doubt that unlimited block size is bad for Bitcoin because, because it diminishes incentive to pay fees and in the long term it makes mining unprofitable. So that was a statement. And then 92.15% voted doubt. Um, oh, okay, so the, you have to yeah vote one way or another. Do you believe that statement or do you doubt that statement to be true? So 92% of people said that... Um, hang on, this might be a reverse logic here. So the statement is, 
I doubt that unlimited block size is bad for Bitcoin. They doubt it is bad, meaning they think it is good. So I think unlimited block size is good for Bitcoin because it diminishes its incentive to pay fees. And in the long term, it makes mining unprofitable. Well, that sounds bad. Well, I don't like all these false falses and these false positives. Anyway, so I can't quite work out what the overall... Um, I think people voted against unlimited block sizes. But we'll see as we go on here. The second point says, I believe that in the event of a fork, I will sell RBF Blockstream core tokens. What's, what the hell's RBF? And buy classic Bitcoins. What? Oh, in the event of a fork. Oh, so they're talking like similar to what's happened with Ethereum if we end up with two Bitcoins. Yeah. So I believe that in the event of a fork, I will sell basically their Bitcoin core tokens and buy Bitcoin classic tokens instead. And then 83.12% of people voted believe. Right. The next one says, I doubt that if non-core, I doubt that if non-core hard fork wins, meaning I I doubt that if the core, <laughs> I doubt that if the core fork loses, right, <clears throat> major holders will sell Bitcoin, driving the price into the ground. And then that's 76% doubt. And the next one is, I believe block size limit should be increased to 8 megabytes as soon as possible. 86% of people said they believe that. Right. So I believe that block size should be increased to 8 megabytes as soon as possible. 86% of people said they believe that. And then, um, oh, this is by large holding addresses specifically though. So it says, I believe that micropayment channels and other tools can help Bitcoin reach all applications for money without compromising Bitcoin's most valuable properties. Yep, 94.76% of people believe that. Okay, so the the statements as I read them were already swayed towards the result that they got. So if they start out with I doubt, um, it means that was that was the outcome rather than rather than the statement being voted on. Yeah. So yeah, what what I, what I would have done with this, this article if I was writing it, I would have listed it like statement block size limit should be increased to eight megabytes as soon as possible. 84% or 86% people believe that to be true. And then micropayment channels and other tools can help Bitcoin reach all applications for money without compromising Bitcoin's most valuable properties. 94% of people doubt that statement, right? So moving on, never go full Ethereum. The recent drama in the Ethereum community led to concerns that a similar disputed fork in the Bitcoin blockchain could result in rival versions of Bitcoin. Yeah, which would likely drive prices down. Um, just a quick check on that one. Has that happened to? Has that happened to Ethereum? Has it happened to Ethereum? Let's just take a quick look here. Say over the last seven days. Well, not hugely there has been a bit of a decline over the last seven days um i think the hard fork happened mm, where was the peak for ethereum the 23rd of july yeah maybe it has caused a bit of a decline okay i agree with that then in bitcoin's case the argument is somewhat different ethereum's fork changed the very nature of the platform introducing the possibility that its blockchain could be altered again at any time in the future this removed the perception of total trust in code that supposedly underpins the smart contract concept. Ethereum Classic fans say they are simply voting to keep the blockchain immutable. That's my point. I agree. A Bitcoin disputed fork over block sizes would not have the same effect. Some might argue that Bitcoin with two megabyte block sizes is no longer pure Bitcoin, though the change is obviously less fundamental. What is your opinion? Vote at Bitcoinocracy and tell us why you decided in the comments below. Hmm. Okay, so you can actually continue to vote on this. Bitcoinocracy. Bitcoinocracy.com. Let me open it up and have a quick look. Okay, it's fairly basic. Bitcoinocracy, vote with your Bitcoin signature. 
Bitcoinocracy offers free and transparent voting mechanism to facilitate decentralized decision making in the Bitcoin ecosystem and to determine the truth backed by real monetary value. Submit your argument or check the existing ones. Right. So, there's all these kind of tabs, popular, blah, blah, blah. The first one is controversial. So it says, if non-core hard fork wins, major holders will sell BTC, driving the price to the ground. Um, okay, so say, yeah, if a non-core client becomes dominant, so say Bitcoin Classic or Bitcoin Unlimited gets, to, gets such adoption that the Bitcoin blockchain forks in that direction because there's a majority of uh, miners, exchanges, nodes running that particular software. So if that happens, if it forks in the direction of a non-core, it says major holders will sell their Bitcoin driving price to the ground. So that's saying that, do you believe that the whales in Bitcoin are, do they derive their confidence from Bitcoin core? That's basically what it's saying. Do you believe that to be true or not? So it's saying that if we, if we fork away from Bitcoin core, that's going to spook the whales and they're going to sell all their Bitcoin, which means that the price of Bitcoin is going to go down to the ground. Now, there's, it says six, what is this, 60, 62,870 Bitcoin is listed as, as the total amount that's been used to vote on that. And it says minus 62,000. So is that a big disagreement? Yeah. So people do not agree that whales are deriving their confidence from Bitcoin core. Most people think that, according to this, and if I'm reading this right, most people believe that if Bitcoin forked away from Bitcoin core, the whales would be fine with that, right? And how do we know that? Well, because some, some whales have actually voted on that very thing. It's not people giving opinion about others. This is pe people giving th their own opinion about what they would do with their Bitcoin, I suppose. Um, the block size limit should be increased to eight megabytes as soon as possible. Okay, that one's green. And 84,584 Bitcoins has been pledged um, and it's green. So that means people agree that the block size should be increased to eight megabytes as soon as possible. Wow, and there's all kinds of things here. The status quo is better than BIP 101. Uh, and then there's another one. The BIP 101 is better than the status quo. They're two separate ones. A one-time increase to eight megabytes would be better right now than four megabytes. Mm, only 1,217 people, uh, Bitcoins agree with that. Where, where are the big humdingers? Wide consensus doesn't mean anything if it was achieved by censorship. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, I just want to look at the big, big, big ones. Now let's go to the popular tab and see what happens. So the, the one that's got the most pledged on it is uh, 83,925 Bitcoins. And this is, people agree with this. So it says, in the event of a fork, I will sell my RBF Blockstream core tokens and buy classic Bitcoins. <clears throat> I think what that's talking about is if what happened to Ethereum happens in Bitcoin, if someone steps in and then tries to artificially fork the network and essentially create a, a centralized decision-making you know, intervention, then people are like, no way, right? They would they would just sell the manipulated the coins on the manipulated chain and buy what would become Bitcoin Classic. Uh, that's confusing because there already is a Bitcoin Classic, but Ethereum Classic is the unmanipulated chain. So most of these people are saying that they want to be part of a Bitcoin that isn't manipulatable or manipulated. They believe in um, the immu immutability of the blockchain, and they would um, trade their coins for that. Anyway, you can check this out yourself. I'm not going to bang on about it for a long time. It's bitcoinocracy.com, and then you can check out all the arguments on there. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. I hope you've enjoyed listening today. If you'd like to support the Cryptoverse or subscribe, please go to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, subscribe on any of your favorite platforms, Please also upvote this episode of the Cryptoverse on Steemit or contribute to the Cryptoverse via Bitcoin using the address on the bottom of that page. 
All right, guys, I will see you in the next episode. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.